What is up guys and girls, Hurricane Liz here. And in today's videos, I tackle the questions of the week. And I gotta say, there are some excellent questions in here. So if you need strategies and tactics for Amazon or KDP, you wanna pay attention because like I said, there's some really bright people that ask some really good stuff. And on top of that, we have a heck of a lot of fun. So I'm excited, I hope you're excited. Let's go ahead and jump straight in. All right, so let's get started with the questions of the week. And this question, I really just wanted to show you guys from a perspective of whatever it is that you decide to do, whatever business you decide to do, you're gonna have to treat it as a business and put some effort in it, put a little bit of elbow grease. Brent points out, according to one of my videos, it's crazy how it comes down to practice and the compounding effect. And now he's referring to me, I played a million hands a year of poker and the other guys only paid 50,000 hands. This is one of the reasons Kobe Bryant got so good compared to everyone else. He practiced four times a day when others would practice twice a day. In five years, he had practiced so much more than the average basketball player on top of learning from his mistakes, getting a mentor. So yes, that is in fact why I became so good at online poker is because of all the effort that I put in. People would often actually make posts and you can actually go there and read it. I'm going to show you guys one such post. So take a look at this actual post that I just searched one of my old poker names. Look at a guy complaining about the amount of time that I played. It says, who is this guy? I'm not sure I've ever seen someone play such a high percentage of days. Does he play live ever? I almost feel bad for him as it's pretty clear he has no social life playing 95% of days, but he does have money. Thoughts? That's me. Who feels bad for me? Who thinks I don't have a social life? That's not the point. The point is I devoted a good portion of time, effort, and energy. And a lot of people out there that are not seeing results from their business, this is all I did. I went out there, I got a mentor, I studied like a lunatic, I practiced like a lunatic, and I became excellent like a lunatic, and I had a social life. So who do you feel sorry for, me or this loser that's posting this information about me on the internet? right? So my point to you guys out there is very particular things I did. I studied, I learned, I learned from my mistakes, I got a mentor, and I became great at something, pretty much epic at something. You can read the book. There's a book about it available on Amazon. It's called The Mental Game of Poker. It has my story in there. And that's how you become great at something. So everybody out there that's struggling, everybody out there that's doing things the wrong way, even the great struggle. You, you saw my life update two and a half months. I haven't worked. I just got back to work. Thank you for all the wishes and the well wishes, the advice that you guys gave me. I truly appreciate it. I'm back, back better than ever, and I'm gonna share with you guys how I got to where I am now and how to become great at something. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of the questions because there was a lot of really good ones this week. So I really want you guys to pay close attention because if you pay attention to these questions, you're gonna learn some brand new strategies and some really awesome tips that viewers gave me, right? So that's another thing that you have to become good at Listen to people that give you advice, even if they're what you feel is below you, even if they're noobs, even if you don't know where they're at, because any advice can be deciphered and turned into good advice because it will create brand new ideas in your mind. So a couple people gave me some brilliant advice. I'm gonna share that with you guys right now live. So here's the first question. Could you please give us more details about adding other categories? And we're talking about Kindle Direct right here. So let me show you how to do that. All you gotta do is go into your Kindle account and right here, there is a contact us button. It obviously tells you how to add or update categories right here. You can do that, but you can only add two. If you hit this contact us button and you contact them and ask them, can you add me to this category? They will add you to a third. That's the trick of how people are getting three categories on there. Does it help? It's still yet to be determined, but the place that it does help is it will potentially get you a hot new release because now you got three different categories to choose from. So. You can do that by going there and figuring that out. Let's look at some of the rest of these actual questions. That was the first one. Let's go to the next one. This is a long one, but there's three in here that I promise are well worth your time. This is one of them. So this one says, I have my own way doing AMS. Here is the brilliance of this. You guys can read this at your own pleasure, at your own leisure. He pointed out a couple things that I did wrong that he felt that I did wrong based on his actual criteria for starting an AMS ad. And Gareth, I really appreciate this, man. You are badass, dude. He bids low 20 cents. So I bid too high is what he first pointed out. Now, every couple weeks, he looks at them, he optimizes them. And if the ad is profitable, he just turns it off, doubles his money every time. 
So this was just a piece of advice that I'm going to take to heart and I'm going to test out because again, you should test out everything that somebody tells you, but I think Gareth actually knows what he's doing here. I'm going to listen to his advice. I'm going to do it. And I thank him from the bottom of my heart for sharing this, not which, not just with me, but with the rest of you guys. So let's report back our results, right? That's the only way we get better at stuff is acting as a community. Next one up. This is again, another guy. The bid on some of your books are very high. This guy suggests three cents. So I might go and test the book out by starting with three cents. And then if I get no impressions, just increase it by 20% every couple days. With Gareth, I'll start one at 20. With this guy, Dero, which I highly appreciate your advice, Dero. You are badass too. I am going to start a test with this too. Thank you guys for contributing to the community and making not just myself better, but everybody else out there. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Here's another uh, point by Heather. Heather asks, why did I do 10 keywords versus doing tons and tons like the other two guys did. Well, the reality is that what I've learned and I will have an ads video up with the five lessons that I've learned from doing KDP ads is that KDP requires an entirely different strategy from FBA. With FBA, you want to focus all the core of your budget immediately on the words that are going to have the most impactful type of results on your actual product. And a lot of times it's just a core group of 10 words. But with KDP, you really want to cast a wide net and get as many sales as you possibly can at the lowest possible price. And that's why you vary the bidding and you put in as many keywords as possible. And so then she also asks, is it necessary to run different ads on a book? Yes, you should. Your automated or your automatic bidding ad should always be bringing you in brand new keywords that you could potentially make sales for that you would have never even known. Like ridiculous shit. There is some of the most ridiculous words ever that will pop up on those. And then you can add them to your other campaigns in order to generate even more sales for words that you never even knew existed. That's why you do them. And so again, Heather also points out, is there a reason you bid so high? So again, it's fantastic that all the community has pointed out that I'm used to bidding so high and that's because I come from an FBA background and there if you don't bid high you don't get any impressions. So thanks so much Heather. Heather also has another one that says some of my keywords that I was targeting have a click through rate of 12% and others have a 4%. Does that mean you go through and shut off the keywords that have low click through rates? No, that's not Heather. We never shut down keywords that have low click through rates if they have sales. If they're not getting any sales, if they're not getting any impressions and there's really no reason to actually have them running. So then I would shut them down. Uh, just because you're getting a 4% click through rate on one word doesn't mean that you're going to get any sales. Ultimately, you pay close attention to which keywords bring you sales. Now, if you have a lot of clicks on a particular product and you're not getting any sales, then you definitely want to negative exact that keyword. So again, if you get a lot of clicks on a particular keyword and no sales, it means your product is not converting that keyword. And in that instance, yes, you do negative exact that keyword so that you no longer get any clicks. You no longer get charged for the keyword. It doesn't matter if that keyword brings you a 10% click through rate. That will po possibly get you more impressions, but you're not getting any sales. Amazon will probably at some point stop giving you impressions. So you just want to beat them to the punch and you want to get rid of it because overall Amazon looks at how well your actual campaigns are doing in terms of when it decides what to serve you in terms of impressions. All right, here's Sama. Sama asks, I have a problem with my campaign. When I click on one of my campaigns, it does not show results. It says no data available. Now I have had this same problem on some of my campaigns, Sama, and I found that it is a glitch at the present moment with in Amazon AMS. And a lot of my actual KDP books are getting this same actual error. Now doesn't mean you're not getting charged. You'll still notice that you're getting sales. And if you keep trying to look at it every other day or so, you'll start to get the results, the actual results. Now this happened to me at first and I was like, what the hell happened? Did my ads completely get canceled? But the reality was it is a glitch. So if this is happening for you right now, then they haven't fixed the glitch. Chances are, if you're seeing this video right now and it's not happening anymore, well, the glitch has been fixed. So yay. All right. MHO says two weeks ago, again, same thing, no data to show. So multiple people are having this problem. And like I said, if it's working out, fantastic. If not, you guys know why now. All right. Sky Life says, and this is a really interesting question that I'm going to sort of summarize because I don't feel like reading the whole thing because I'm a terrible, I'm terrible at reading. I forgot to mention that to you guys. So I don't read, I don't really uh, speak English very well, but I still manage to be able to do all this stuff, right? Here is a question about indexing. What he's found is that the majority of his live books, almost 70, 80% of them are not indexing for the keyword he's usually putting in the back end. And what he's found is also that the books that have been indexed by Amazon are ranking somewhere in the first pages, even without sales. However, the books that have not been 
index aren't. So why is this happening? Well, the way I want you guys to imagine this is imagine that there's only 1,000 books listed today for the keyword dragon coloring book, right? But every day, 100 people put a brand new book for that keyword dragon coloring book. Those 1,000 actual books that are being shown right now will be shuffled around depending how many brand new people are coming in because Amazon knows that if you've been sitting there in the thousand books and haven't made a sale that you're more than likely not going to make a sale moving forward because your cover is not getting enough clicks, right? So ultimately Amazon is at first going for clicks. So if your product starts to get a lot of clicks in comparison to other products, it will stay in that thousand. But Amazon will always give the fresh meat a fresh chance of being in the top 1000. So all those 100 books will somehow get shuffled in and it will gauge whether or not they're getting clicks. And if they are getting clicks, it'll stay on the top 1000. Now if they start to get sales, it's even better for your book and chances are it will stay in the top 1000. But every single day, 100 brand new people are trying to get shown in the thousand. If you're not getting any sort of traction whatsoever, you're going in the Amazon graveyard forever and your book will never be seen again unless you actually do some advertising and bring in external people to Amazon and show Amazon I am worthy of being on this top 1000 because guess what Amazon I'm going to send you external traffic so that you get sales for other crazy shit that doesn't even apply to dragon coloring books so hopefully that makes sense as to why that happens now some of the books that are actually selling, they indexed, right? And the reason that they indexed is because they got immediate clicks or they got immediate interest or maybe there's not a lot of people competing. Maybe there's not a thousand people. Maybe there's only a hundred people. So the reality is that almost every single thing that you put up will index. And the way you can check it is by using AMZ. I think it's called AMZ Run Extender. Let's take a look here. It's this AMZ Run Extension. This will check if you're indexed. Now that doesn't mean if you're indexed, it doesn't mean you're in the top 20 pages. You you could be on page 10,000 and still be indexed. So all index mean is that you show up for the keyword if you run it here on AMZ run extension. That's it. And there is also another trick. So I'll show you in a future video a trick on how you can check manually without AMZ run extension to see if you are in fact indexed. All right, so we're on to the next question. Amin says, I think you put a higher bid. 32 cents is better with 20% every 30 days. So I bid again too high. Thank you, Amin, for pointing that out. And again, I'm going to use this strategy and let you guys know the results of my strategy of lower bidding. And I'll tell you how it went. So thanks again, Amin. And Judy says, I have one newer book that has a 75,000 ranking. It's a kindergarten type workbook. When I put the ASIN in Helium 10, it says there's no competitive ASINs. I know there are. Have I done something wrong? So what I recommend to Judy is either i don't know how old the book is but it could be like really new and that could be the reason why it's not coming out but if not what i would do is i would grab one of your top competitors put that asin in and see if they come up if they come up i would just use that data as if it's my own i know it's not accurate or exact but it's a lot better than not having any data at all so if your book's not coming up Again, I don't know why it could be a glitch within Helium 10, but I would just grab the competitor's ace and, and use that, Judy. So hopefully that helps. Let's see what the next question is. And, and that's pretty much it. How quickly did I go through that, right? That was pretty simple, but those were some of the screen shares that I grabbed these past two weeks from the hot questions of the week that I thought would be extremely helpful to you guys' business. As usual, let me know your questions in our comments below. I always personally answer them and I always grab them for screen shares to pull on here, especially when they're so useful. So thanks guys for all the love. Thanks guys for all the support and girls too. And I, I, I won't forget the two or three girls that do watch this channel. The rest is a sausage fest. I appreciate you guys coming to the barbecue every week and I'll see you guys on the next video.